the News Channel 5 Network. This is Morning Line with Nick Barris. Thanks for joining us on Morning Line. Nick Barris here on a Wednesday. We've got a good show on tap for you. You're going to open up the phone lines in just a moment and give you a chance to dial in. If you have a question, comment, just want to chat with Davidson County Sheriff Darren Hall. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Nick. How nice to see you. How are you? Um, a little rattled today. How come? Uh -huh. All right, come on. Let's see. My normal routine wasn't happening. My son, I was taking him to school. He's out late today, so um, so that threw me off. Then there was this thing called traffic in Nashville that. Um, yeah. I assume you're for the mayor's traffic plan. Um. Oh, see, he's got little things there that he's not so. Come on. Come on. I, let me let me let me just stay in my lane. No okay, pun, baby, no you like intended. the idea of doing things to ease our traffic congestion. Uh, sure. Light rail, baby. Okay, it's going to cost more than the jail, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. God, yeah. Five, this has got yeah. bees behind yeah. it. <laughs> These are bees. <laughs> it's a lot of money. Well, I would just think if nothing more, as you look at this, you guys have to transport inmates through this crap. <clears throat> okay, so finding a way, I assume you would not be transporting the inmates on our light rail through the tube, would you? <laughs> no. No, that would not be the case. But um, there may be a line that clears it to the jail. Back yeah, we have view, we serve warrants all over town. We, yeah. We're spending a lot of money in, in fuel and vehicles and people, and um, you know, there, there's a lot to do. I mean, I I don't think I'll be around when it's all resolved, and That's so I hope my my children, and my oh. kids, lived uh, in, in a. You'll in a be list. around. It's a few years. I mean, what do they say? Five years, maybe. When well. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? It doesn't take that long to borrow the money. You no, know? nah, that's true. It's a lot of money. They're talking about the, uh, I was talking to Amy Watson this morning. I don't think they're doing any more blasting over here at the jail site, no, are they? That's no, done. No. When they did, it rattled our newsroom at times. You yes. can feel, oh, they're clearing some more stone over there. <laughs> but no more of that because clearly the structure is going no, up. Wait, yeah, yeah, it's really. not going to be done until 2018, 1919, uh, 19, uh, early 2019. About 18, what about 16 months from now? Yeah, they're moving. It's going, yeah, they work. I mean, I, I, I watch it, it just drawing by. It is it's the engineering marvel of, of building and what you see all around Nashville. But it is. You watch that; it's incredible to me. It's. I mean, and, and again, I, I, of course, I get here let's yeah. say seven seven thirty in the morning. They're working and they're working when I leave. It's it's a, um, and again, on, on a pretty tight envelope. You, you think about you know in a city like this, cranes are where vehicles are coming and going. I, I just. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm amazed with how the crane works. I yeah. guess when I was a kid, I used to like that, and yeah. I just watch all that happen. And um, but yeah, we we uh, the floors are going in. They will actually bring almost like what boxes or these are, are cells. They'll bring them in and insert them on the floor. They're already precast, pre-made oh, off site. So that just it slides right. in and they bolt them right, in. Right. Right. So uh, Gosh, the floors cool. are going in, then they'll insert the what, what you and I would call the cells uh, a little, little bit later. And um, you know, there's a lot, uh, uh, just like a house, I think. It looks like it's going to be finished, but there's so much inside. There's security apparatus and wiring, and you know, it'll take forever once they get the building built. But right. it, it's moving fast right now, I think. How many uh, cells again will there be? About 750, I Did think. Did you want more than that, or is 750 going to be you okay? Know, I think it'll be all right. The number we, you know, we, we talked many times about we took, uh, we took an entire floor off the jail to build a uh, mental health treatment mm -hmm. center also. So, I mean, there's another roughly 100 beds that you'll have for that. So, but I, that's plenty. Nashville, okay. I mean, really, our bed yeah. capacity is in good shape. And, um, you know, I said many times when we were trying to do that, we didn't need, uh, the analogy was a car in your, your parking lot or your driveway. We didn't need an additional car. We needed to repair the one we had, and, and it was in such bad shape, we just needed to get rid of it. Right. And so, we weren't building, and we still, we, we built less beds than we had before. There were 1,300 beds downtown when we started there'll be 700 when we finish and so you're reducing your overall bed number but the people who need to be over here are the very high risk people right. and, and they need they need a secure environment and it's a uh, it, it'll be fine when it's over with but um, it was just built in the wrong place gotcha gotcha all right a uh, couple things to hit you on I gotta ask you about this you have one of your sheriff's office lieutenants in trouble right. um, is it was he placed on administrative leave um, or has he been terminated no he's uh, he's on leave and, and there's several steps these are always really confusing for us and everybody else I mean you, you have criminal charges mm -hmm. which he, he uh, clearly it could take months maybe a year for those to wrap up 
we do our, our own investigation into whether you violated policy or not. Now, some may say, well, you violated the law. That hasn't been proven yet. Right. So, we, we, But we do have a policy about certain things that occurred in this situation that, that are, are, are violations. And so we'll go forward with our discipline. There will be criminal charges, I assume, in this case that will continue. Uh, and there could be something that happens down the road. We could terminate now. We could terminate later once that all that happens. Is contingent on what happens with the criminal case sometimes? Sometimes. Or is that it's, separate? It's, if he's convicted. Right. It's, it's a tricky thing. And, and one of the things, I mean, I've always taken a policy. Um, the police department's a little different than this. We're very aggressive with, with um, how long we leave you on leave mm -hmm. and how long we wait on the disciplinary uh, <coughs> hearing to occur. The police department, which do a good job, but they, they wait on all that to finish and then make the decision. I just don't like people all over our agency awaiting the outcome and then you know by the time you know sometimes that's a year later um, I, I like to go ahead and figure out what have you done as it relates to our policies and let's get that wrapped up yeah sometimes the actual in his case and others if you're convicted of a crime you cannot no longer be an officer in the jail by law oh that makes sense so right. so so we we may have to do something now and then if it, it's a conviction down the road that could change it but uh he um well you just know, yeah. you know people are wondering yeah. okay we're laying that out there but yeah this was a lieutenant Derek leaves arrested i guess friday night accused of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon after allegedly pulling out his handgun and threatening to shoot two people Witnesses report a man was taking a car to a woman at a workplace off Cumberland Bend. Gleaves, who was in full uniform, which I imagine right. this would be one of the violations, right. allegedly followed the man into the parking lot, blocked him in, and accused him of having a sexual relationship with his wife. Uh, the man confronted Gleaves, and Gleaves got the handgun and reportedly yelled that he should shoot both the man and the woman. But then he left the scene. No one was injured. He was later arrested and placed on administrative leave. Sounds like, you know, a jealousy thing issue here and whether anything was going on. Uh, there's no indication of that. But yeah, you, you, So uh, you worry about someone's mental state in a situation like that. Right. There's a lot to think about. One, one you hit right on it. I mean, the, the, the thing that jumps off the page for us is that, that you're wearing a uniform. I mean, clearly he was on his way home, or at least recently uh, mm -hmm. had been off, still a violation of policy you can't do any of that it was not our weapon he doesn't carry a weapon for us okay so not Wait, to, what did he work what was his capacity was he he's a lieutenant in the jail in which the do not carry gotcha. do not carry uh, okay. uh, firearms and so so you know doesn't mean that there's not pr problems the uniform is a problem uh, some of the obviously the criminal allegations are, are a problem as well but but I, I will tell you that, that one of the things is very hard to do in cases like these, and we, this happens often in, in the world yeah. that we're in, where there's a domestic sure. dispute. Um, and I'm not suggesting either side's right or wrong, but a lot of times these things settle in different ways. And I'm mm -hmm. not, I, I don't know any, anything to do with this particular one, but one of the things that we've learned is you almost have to wait and watch and see what happens. And in the meantime, take him out of his assignment, or if, if the, the violations are serious enough, we, we would terminate. We do that often. But not yet. Had he been with you for a while? Yeah, he's been there. I think he'd been a lieutenant for about eight months, but he's been there many years. I mean, oh, okay. I, I don't so know you exactly. knew of him. Right, right. Did Would you sit down and talk him? to him at some point when, you know, you have to do the disciplinary? I mean, is that you that does that? Well, we have a panel. That I do not discuss anything okay. because there's a three-member panel that, that recommends uh, the level of, of discipline, then that discipline is eventually. I, in some ways, uh, would be a conflict because the appeal process has to come to someone, and I don't need to be tainted by all of that on the front end. But okay. unfortunately, it happens quite often, and I mean that in all agencies like ours and and there's a law about um you know a person who carries a weapon he's not one of ours but a p person carrying a weapon if you have a domestic related charge or an order of protection your weapon has to be taken away by mm -hmm. law mm -hmm. well that that means that individual can't work for you doing their job just f i mean if, well, but if, he doesn't carry a weapon in no, the jail. No, but it, but it changes what we would allow him to be doing. All we right. have our own policies. You mentioned a minute ago you wouldn't want someone that is, um, let's just say, disturbed and, mm -hmm. and emotionally wrapped mm -hmm. up in these dealing with the public or sure. inmates and so forth. So it limits where you can work. It's a difficult situation, but we will probably in the next couple of weeks have ours wrapped up, and then we will await the criminal outcome if he still works with us. Yeah, well, it's good no one was hurt. I mean, right. Hopefully this gets resolved, and domestics are so complicated. Right, it is. Like it's that. complicated. Well, as always, we'll take your phone call, 737-7587. The other thing, and we'll probably talk about this throughout the, the, you know, the show, and we'll see what the viewers think, but, boy, you see what's going to be happening in Murfreesboro and Rutherford no. County this weekend, the, this White Lives Matter, white nationalist groups that are gathering, and uh, I just didn't know, talking to, um, you know, the sheriff there yep. in Rutherford County, the, the, well, there's a new police chief, there's an interim right wow. now. Wow. I don't know what happened to Chief yeah. Durr, but he's out <laughs> now, and uh, so um, they were telling me that, essentially, it's not just them, they're going to be getting help from Metro. Right. And I don't know if right. you've been even contacted or if your department would, but the police here, Laverne, Smyrna, all of that for the rallies that are going to happen.
happened Saturday in Murfreesboro and Shelbyville. And then we find out last night that there's a Facebook post that there's going to be a Nazi torch march on the MTSU campus near the Forest Hall. Now, that's not been confirmed definitively, but I know that MTSU is aware of the post, was trying to get details on it. And, uh, you know, they've canceled several events this weekend, a mm. uh, big marching band competition, which is a shame for those kids not getting to do this now. I just hope that all this mm. reaction is minimized by what happens and they all just show up and go after they do their little march. But Me too. I'm just curious then. So from your perspective, have you uh, um, been contacted? Will you have any involvement? Will you, any of your folks be on standby should they need help? Yeah, we, um, Chief Anderson, I talked about this several weeks ago. I know uh, the police department is sending several resources mm -hmm. there. Um, uh, we, we have been contacted via someone else, and, and our con really uh, it's more about our booking room and our mobile, mobile booking units and send right. some support there. And I think we're still working out the details of that. We also have a response team that, that is networked through OEM and some other emergency uh, response here. So all that's in on standby and kind of waiting to see where what happens right. and where we go. But uh, I, I'm like you. I, I, um, I just hope it's all peaceful, whatever that means. It sounds bizarre right. to even say it. And... Um, uh, you know, we, we don't need this community, this country it doesn't need any more uh, uh, ugly scenes than, than we've had lately. And, um, you know, I just... Uh, but you just don't want like Charlottesville. And, right. and this is already beginning to show. The difference then from Charlottesville, even though Charlottesville also had a Nazi torch rally mm -hmm. the night before, now we see this happen. It's kind of scary seeing the parallels because there have been other rallies that have been peaceful and kind of right. come and gone. The difference is, though, I think law enforcement here, and it's a credit to all of you, I think, uh, have, have looked and learned from Charlottesville. Right. And while they maybe weren't as proactive initially, no fault of their own, they didn't know it was going to explode like that, I think here they're ready to go. Yeah, you, you know, I, again, I'm not an expert in, in, in yeah. all of that, but I, I would I would say that uh, you know you, you have some things that concern you. You have a college campus, which is is mm -hmm. al always uh, you know of course full of young people and activism and so forth, and that's that that's an issue. Um, you, you know, sometimes I worry about the attention that Charlottesville got and kind of if you're really mm -hmm. wanting to make havoc and right. You know, on that note, let me let's take a break on that because yeah. we have to take it. But I want I'm glad you brought that. I want to get your take on it because there, there's a certain responsibility here that the media has to play as well and uh, we don't want to help perpetuate their message of hate because you have no doubt some of these groups want the publicity so how do we cover this without giving them what they want and that's something we wrestle with and I know you guys think about we'll take a break be back with your uh, questions comments for the sheriff through the nine o'clock hour right after this